dirty? You greedy SOB, let's make you some money. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS, and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to another episode of the MLS Search and Analysis Show. I'm James Wise. This is Holton Wise TV. And who I'm working with today is my man, Dirty Sanchez from California. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's his nickname. I don't know. I think, it's, I think you should probably, bro, you got to hit me up in the comments in your video. When this publicly launches on Holton Wise TV, just like, be like, yo, I'm Dirty Sanchez. This is the origin of my nickname. That would be great. Just at least for my my own entertainment. I got to see where you come up with that shit, Doc. Uh, what I'm doing for you today, bro, is I'm taking a look at this uh, triplex, right? You had sent this to me. Uh, you're very interested in investing in this particular property, and the numbers are freaking great. And we're going to look at that, but that's going to be uh, a little bit later. What we need to do first, though, dude, we got to talk about your wife, bro. Um, and this is a common concern, okay? Uh, your wife <clears throat> is a little fearful of getting into rental property investing. She's afraid of, like, tenants suing her and, and lawsuits. And, that, you know, dude, this is normal. This is a normal fear. A lot of people, you hear it all the time, like, oh, I would never be a landlord. I don't want to lose my own house, right? Guys, that is, like, ugh, a way overblown fear okay now there's a lot of layers to this but let's try to like take these off peel these like one by one a as an onion now if you're a real estate investor if you're a landlord and somebody let's say gets injured at your property could they possibly sue you yeah anybody could sue you for anything couple things to note though right first of all you have to have property insurance right you had to have property insurance right so your insurance company is going to be covering you now your insurance policies especially when you get a loan on one of these properties they're going to cover things like that right because the bank has got more money at stake than you right so the scenario where like joe blow tenant slips on the sidewalk breaks his ankle and then takes your own personal house like that's nonsense not going to happen. And, and the insurance is going to cover issues if and when they do occur, right? That's one thing. Another thing is, like, the frequency in which, like, people slip and fall and injure themselves or things of that nature and then sue the landlord happens, like, infrequently. Does it happen? Sure. Does it happen a lot? No, right? You guys watch the Tenants from Hell show, I'm sure. If you don't, you fucking should because it's fucking awesome. Uh, I, I deal with fucked up shit all the time, Okay. Tenants suing us for injuring themselves at our properties happens, like, almost never, right? Off the top of my head, with the thousands and thousands and thousands of rental properties we manage, I could only think of, like, one or two instances where, like, they tried doing that. And I don't even recall them going anywhere, right? Like, in my day-to-day -day life as a property manager running the largest scattered site rental property portfolio in the Cleveland market, Tenants slipping and falling and injuring themselves or tenants suing us uh, is literally, like, not even on my my radar of shit I worry about, right? Like, it's just not an issue, right? And then we have the insurance policies. And what we do is we actually require you guys as real estate investors to carry a liability policy of up to $300,000. But some policies, some banks will require you to carry at least a million in liability coverage, right? You want to talk to your insurance agent, which we can help you out with. Uh, in the show notes below, we have the link to our farmer's office. We can talk you through some of that stuff, see what the right policy is for you. But in general, insurance covers it number one number two it's very infrequent and then you guys in addition to that if if your wife is still nervous about this dirty one other thing you also have to understand like the big bad lawsuits right that can occur uh where you could possibly lose them right that's really only going to happen when you the landlord are negligent right like there is a case where uh landlord got in trouble because carbon monoxide poisoning, uh, his tenants got poisoned by carbon monoxide because this fucking asshole uh, tried to fix the furnace, uh, okay? Furnace was broken. He's not a licensed HVAC guy. 
tried to fix it, did something fucked up. The furnace shot like uh, carbon monoxide in the home, killed killed the tenants. I believe he went to jail, right? Something like that. It's gross negligence, right? And uh, that's how you can end up losing your home, something like that, right? You guys don't even have the opportunity to do that, right? Because you're third party, you're in another state, right? So you don't have the opportunity. Dirty. You don't have the opportunity to go in there and fix the furnace yourself, right? If you try to fly in and fix your furnace, uh, being a non-licensed guy, Holton Wise, we would drop you, right? We wouldn't manage your property anymore. We wouldn't let that happen, right? Because uh, we require licensed professionals to fix everything, right? As part of our property management agreement, which is available on HoltonWise.com, you'll see that we require every property in our portfolio to meet local, state, and federal rental property guidelines right like cities the state the federal government has guidelines conditions that the property needs to meet to be habitable for tenants we will not manage a rental property that doesn't meet those standards we will not manage a rental property if subpar work is being done to it right so on top of those three things holton wise we go in we assess the property if your property doesn't meet our minimum rental property standards we will not manage it for you right so we are like that gap in between, you know, you're here, a lawsuit is here. We're this brick, big brick fucking wall blocking you from lawsuits because here's the deal, bro. My name is on all these properties. My name is on all these trucks in Cleveland. We are the biggest manager of rental properties, scattered site rental properties in the Cleveland market. We are the biggest name in the game. Nobody knows who Dirty Sanchez is, right? You're just anonymous dude in California. So when said tenant... If said tenant is going to try to sue somebody, bro, they're going to try to sue me way before they would try to sue you. And you think I'm going to let myself get sued because some cheap-ass fucking investor wanted to save a couple bucks on their HVAC bill when I own a motherfucking construction company? Fuck no, right? That doesn't make no goddamn sense, right? So I guess the moral of the story is the way we got this whole business set up, uh, your risk of some catastrophic lawsuit where you lose your personal home is is pretty much it's a nonsensical risk right it's it's just not something you got to worry about what you should be worrying about is asshole tenants fucking up your house evicting asshole tenants uh things of that nature right uh something else right like house is burning down i don't think that happens that often but we probably have like i don't know four to five houses burned down every single year, right? That That's a risk, right? But of course your insurance covers that as well, right? So every year in my portfolio, we have like four to five houses a year burned down, right? In my entire career, I can't think of four to five cases where tenants have like sued us for injuries, right? So that's how infrequent it is, right? So uh, that's just not something I think should really be on your wife's radar. Now, uh, I'm a little parched, so I'm going to have you... Uh, take a quick commercial break, and then I'm going to get into the property that you wanted me to analyze. <laughs> 4211 Store Ave, Cleveland, 44109. Been on the market four days. And we need to move. We need to move quick, right? The Cleveland market, yeah, as, as you're probably aware, it's insane, dude. There's just so many people... Uh, bidding on these properties because the price to rent ratios are nuts, right? The price to rent ratios in Cleveland are so much more attractive than the majority of the country. This particular property, in my opinion, uh, listed at a price point that's going to uh, begat a major bidding war, okay? $99,000. Now, we only have two photos because it's fully occupied, all right? That's okay, though, right? We got the front house here, right? We have a front house and we have a back house, okay? Between these two homes, right? We have three total units, right? And the market rent for each of these units is going to be seven fifty, seven fifty, and nine hundred, right? Uh, the two seven hundred fifty dollars ones, those are duplex units, two ones, and then we have a separate two family house, right? So nine hundred, right? So it's even uh, more attractive than a traditional triplex, right? Because one is a full freaking house, okay? So you're looking at a market rent every month of 2400 or 28800 Now, as far as the price goes, they've listed at 99000 which just based upon that rent roll would seem super low. 
The reason they're pricing it that low is they do not have the rents up to market, right? So you're going to slowly need to increase those. Currently, they got people in there at 450, 420, and 485, right? But that is one of the great things about real estate investing, man. If you guys know how to do this the right way, you can look at other people, maybe mom and pop landlords like this one who are running these properties, not as efficiently as they could. And that's how we create value. That's how we get these crazy deals, right? Because I tell you what, if this was a professional investor, a professional turnkey turkey company, professional reseller, and they're bringing in $2,400 a month in rent currently, which is where this should be for the long haul. That's what Holton Wise will be able to target for you when we take over the management. You ain't selling it for 99 k dude. That doesn't make any sense because the numbers would be insane, right? $2,400 a month comes in, $28,800 a year after fixed and variable expense estimates, right? I anticipate this property costing an investor $13,096 a year on average to operate, leaving you with a $15,704 a year NOI. You pick it up at the price of $99,000, your mortgage down payment's only $24,750, right? How insane is that, right? $24,750 is all you need to bring to the table. Bank kicks in another $75K. That would be a 46.3% cash on cash return or a cap of 16. That is, of course, if we can get the tenants, all three of which, from where they currently are, up to market rent. Now, this is the show where I cut it to you straight. This is the show where I talk to you about transparency in the real estate business. Is it possible that we could take our three legacy tenants, our three inherited tenants, paying below market rent, again, 450, 420, 485. Can we possibly get them up to 750, 750, 900 without a turnover? Yes, it's possible. And I just gave you the numbers on what it would look like if we do that theoretically. However, in real world, is that practical? Probably not. I would say the odds are unlikely that you're going to get these three folks from where they currently are to market rent without at least doing one turnover, right? That's why when we run these numbers, we factor in vacancy, non-payment. We factor in repairs and maintenance, right? Because when you're a rental property investor, the majority of um, your repairs, right? They typically come at the turnover, right? People see like a repair estimate, like on this particular property, repairs and maintenance, we're estimating $120 a month. People see that and they get it like in their head, like, oh, I'm going to spend $120 every single month on repairs. No, it's not how it works, right? You're probably going to have like a tenant in there in that particular unit and you're going to go through like 10, 12, 14, 18 months of spending nothing. And then boom, when the tenant turns over, then you're dropping a few grand, things of that nature, right? That's how that works out, right? So, do I think that you can get those rents all the way up there without some type of turnover? Probably not, right? Maybe one, maybe two of the tenants, maybe we get them up. Uh, but I can't, you know, tell you with a certainty uh, how many of those tenants, uh, when and where that turnover is going to happen. So, right, as you're analyzing this property, think about making the investment. You have to understand that that is a risk, right? Turnover is part of the real estate investment business, right? Nobody gets rental properties and places tenants in there and gets 30, 40 year tenants all the time. That's just not practical, right? So, uh, what you have going for you is right now, they can't get comparable units like this for anywhere near those prices. So what I like to do to lower the probability that they're going to turn because you increase the rent is I don't like to go in and be like, yo, market rent's 900, you're paying 485. Next lease, boom, you got to pay 900. I think that is going to give you a high chance that they're just going to be like, oh, dude, I can't afford it, and they will move out, right? And then you're almost guaranteed to spend that money on a turn. What I like to do, I like to raise the rents nice and slow. 50 this year, 50 next year, right? It'll still cash flow. The price is so freaking cheap, it'll still cash flow at the current rent. So I like to go nice and slow and keep those butts in the units, right? Because we make our money in this business by turning our units over as few times as possible. If you own a apartment building, you own, let's say you own one unit, right, for 20 years, the guy who makes the most money is the guy who turns it over the least amount of times 
over those 20 years. So, 99000 is what they're asking. I think we got to offer 99000 at the minimum. You let me know what you want to offer. I do not anticipate anything other than a massive bidding war. If it were me, I'd probably be willing to kick 10k above list price, but you let me know and I'll write it up. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.